Hello guys, it's Vivs here from Design Coder. In this video, I'm going to talk about the workflow of our app Speechly. Now Speechly is an app that you're going to use while you're giving a presentation on the stage. For example, you're a speaker and you have two minutes to talk. So Speechly is going to give you this beep or notification sound when there are only 30 seconds left so that you can conclude yourself. So the user starts the app and the user toggles the button that Speechly has. If the timer is already running, it is turned off. If the timer is not running, it is started. Then you're asked to enter the time. There is a dialogue that says enter the time in minutes or seconds for which your speech is going to last. Then you're going to enter the time and it's accepted only if it's more than 30 seconds. Because like I said, at 30 seconds, there's going to be an alarm or a notification or a beep sound indicating that this is your last 30 seconds. And it will be in such a way that it, it, it isn't too disruptive either so that you can carry on with your speech while you're talking. So if the timer is more than 30 seconds, then that is going to be accepted. And then the timer is going to be run. Now the timer checks every time whether the time has reached 30 seconds. In other words, if you see 45 seconds, it's going to be like 45 is 30. So then this timer is going to go down to 44. It's going to check if it's 30 seconds because at 30 seconds, you want to play that beep noise or notification to the user indicating that there are only 30 seconds left. But if the timer, the current time is not 30 seconds, then you continue and you run as long as the time is more than zero or while you have more time available, you keep running the timer. When there is no more time available, you simply stop the app. So this is how Speechly works at a high level. So the next question that you have by default is like, hey Vibs, how are you going to make the timer in Android? You remember very well that Android runs on Java at the time of shooting this video. And there are three options in Java as such. One is you can use the class called Countdown Timer. There is another class called Timer Task. And third is something called a Handler. I'll be using the third option, but let me tell you why I am not using the first two options in short. The first class, Countdown Timer, would be the best option to use by default. However, it has an issue, which is why I'm not using it. If you see Countdown Timer on tick problem on Stack Overflow, you will find a lot of results where they say that the last on tick call is skipped or something like this. Now, I encourage you guys to go out there and read it in detail, but there's a problem with this class, which is why I'm not using it. The second option would be Timer Task. And if you see timer task versus handler, there's a nice article here from Android Training Center or blogspot.com where they say that the handler is superior to the timer task. And the reason for that is pretty, pretty simple. It's right here where it says you cannot reschedule a timer, but you can reschedule a handler. At the same time, a timer task is going to run in background, so you cannot update your user interface, but that's not true for the handler's runnables. In our case, we need to change the text every time we have our timer running. And that means we, have to, we need to update our user interface and that cannot be done if you're using a timer task. And therefore, I'm going to switch to the third option, which would be the handler. So the whole concept of running a timer in Android or iOS is simple. You need to do something again and again. Now this again and again word phrase brings the for loop, the while loop and the do while loop into your head. But I'll tell you why it's different. You see, this is our main activity here. There are some methods like on create on create options menu, on options item selector, blah, 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 many other methods you may have inside your main activity. Now, all these methods are not triggered by you. They are called and triggered by your Android system at the right time, depending on whether you're starting the app or pausing the app and stuff like that. It's all covered in something called the activity life cycle. Now, inside these methods, whenever they are called, they're gonna be run one line at a time. Like your compiler is gonna see this line. Okay, I'm gonna run this now. Then it's gonna run this line. Then it's gonna run this line. And that default sequence of running things is called the main thread by default in the simplest words. If you go to Google and type Android handler, the first result is from Android developers. If you go to videos, you will also find our sliding videos in all the first top four results that also talk about the handler in detail. Now, if you take a look at the documentation here, it says a handler allows you to send and process message and runnable objects within a threads message queue. Now, this is not so evident. Let me show you what this means visually. If you take a look at our presentation here, our main thread is like a boss and our handler is like the secretary of that boss. In other words, the boss doesn't do everything at the same time, but the secretary does. The secretary is gonna get phone calls, appointments, emails, and they're gonna forward one piece of work at a time to the boss so that the boss can run it. In our case, the boss runs all the things 
on the main thread with the help of something called the looper and i'm not going to get into the details of what a looper is right now but a handler is basically some kind of forwarding mechanism who is gonna push messages one at a time so let's go back and try to understand what we can do with this let's try to understand how this whole timer thing is going to work in other words the simplest idea is something like this you want to keep doing something that means run a task and every time you run the task you want to control what happens to the timer for example let's say you want to count down from 50 seconds to zero 50 seconds is translated as 50,000 milliseconds in the world of java every time you run the task or you run the timer you want to reduce the amount of time it's like 50 49 48 47 remember that is going to happen right here you're going to reduce by 1000 milliseconds or one second every time now this happens inside a method called run now this method belongs to an interface called runnable so you can construct an object of this interface in several ways you can have a class extend this runnable interface and then implement the method or you can have a variable like here where you say runnable r equals to new runnable blah 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 all the code here or you can have a lambda expression as per java 8 because runnable is a functional interface again google what is a functional interface if you're not familiar with it but the idea is simple this runnable interface with a single method run simply defines a task that you want to perform as part of the task we keep reducing the time by thousand every time we reduce the time we also check something we check if the time remaining is more than zero because we don't want to go into negative time right you want to stop the timer when it hits zero so every time if the time remaining is more than zero in that case reschedule the job and that's what this method does handler dot post delayed it takes two arguments first is r second is thousand in simple words it means give me the task to be performed and give me the amount of time after which i should perform the task now this whole process has to be kick started and the way you do that is to directly call handler dot post delayed at the top so let me give you a clear picture of how this works and of course i'll be showing you this in code in the next video when we jump to android studio and try this out so first you call handler dot post delayed you supply it the variable that contains your task when you do that the run method is going to be automatically triggered by your handler without you having to bother about anything this code is going to run where it says time remaining is time remaining minus thousand which makes it 49,000. since 49,000 is more than zero once again you will call handler dot post delayed r comma thousand which means run the task r after a thousand milliseconds so let's say one second passes by once again this method now run is going to be called once again the time is going to be reduced to 48,000. 48,000 is more than zero you will see that okay so reschedule the job once again after a thousand milliseconds and you understand what i'm saying right the process keeps repeating till it reaches the last part where time remaining is thousand and thousand minus thousand becomes zero so at this point the if condition becomes false and the task is not rescheduled again and your timer stops so this is how the handler works at a high level in the next video i will dig into code in android studio and show you this in action in the meantime stay tuned all the videos covering the design the android part and the ios development are right here on designcoder.io so be sure to sign up right today and get unlimited unrestricted access to all the videos thanks for watching have a nice day